Hi guys, and welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'll be giving you a look at the two-face and set function within the Leica Icon Fields controller. Okay, this is an added license. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just jump down and jump into our active licenses. And what you will want to check is and just make sure is that you have the two-face and set license active here. Okay, if you haven't got this license, please feel free to get in touch and we can work out a way to get this activated for yourselves. So what I will do guys is I'll jump into the measure application because the function I want to do is record points. Okay, we'll see within the toolbox we have the sets of angles function here. So guys, why is this function useful? Well, we are aware that there's an error in all of our observations, both in the horizontal and in the vertical when we're using robotic total stations. So there's a plus or minus tolerance specified on your robotic total station. So it's gonna be either an error to the right or to the left of the horizontal, up or down, in the vertical relative to the crosshair. We do not know whether the error is to the right or to the left, so plus or minus or up or down. However, if we record a measurement in our face one, so looking straight ahead onto our point, and we'll say in this instance that the error is right and up. If we turn our robotic total station around 180 degrees and flip it around in the vertical, we'll see now that we're sighting onto the exact same point again. However, what we will notice is that the errors will have flipped. So in the horizontal, if the error was on the right, it'll be on the left. And in the vertical, if it was in the upper area, it'll be below the crosshairs now. So logic would tell us that if we record both measurements in both faces, if we average the two together, we are more likely to achieve a more accurate or precise measurement. So this is the logic behind using sets of angles or average measurements. So, and it's a really useful function. It really is the only applicable way for actually extending control to the site using a robotic total station. Otherwise, when you extend your control to the site, if we just use single shot, we haven't really got any control over our error propagation through our control network. So guys, what I'll do is I'll first give you a look at just the measure set function. So what I'll do is first, I just want to record one control point here because you will need what's known as the backside point. So this is a point that's already existing within your network that you want to tie all the future forward stations or new control points into. What I'll do now is if I go leave control points active and I select sets of angles, what it asks us to do is first specify our method. So the method chosen there as standard is backside one, foresight one, foresight two, backside two. And essentially what that means is measure to your backside or known point in the original phase, phase one. Then we can turn and we can measure our forward station in phase one. And we can measure multiple forward stations continuing until we decide, okay, this is enough. We flip our total station into backside two, and then we'll work our way back anti-clockwise back towards those points. Okay. You can change the method. However, I don't see the need and we can just leave this one as standard. A full set would recommend going phase one the whole way through our backside and our new forward stations. And then going in phase two, returning back to our original backside point. So that is considered one set. We do recommend that you use a minimum of three. However, the more sets we use, the more likely it is that we'll achieve a more accurate or precise re result. The reason I like to specify three is that the whole idea with averaging is that if I record three measurements and two are closer to each other and you have one outlier, it will take the other two as through and specify the further away measurement or observation as an outlying point and hence just focus on the other two because we can get slips or errors in the measurements. So again, we'll recommend a minimum of three. For the purpose of this and just demonstrating it through the simulator, I will just go as one. So if I select, okay. So Icon, as we are all aware, will constantly try to walk us through any of the tools or applications that we're within. So it's asking us, select the backside point. So if I select on point one, okay, it'll say measure backside point or select a different one. So what I will do is I will just get it to center there onto point one. Again, you will always want to make sure that you have the correct prism type, prism height selected, and also your measure mode. So if you're shooting onto retro targets, I would recommend obviously going reflectorless with single manual. However, if you have your prisms, I would recommend actually selecting obviously the correct prism type within the measure mode, I would recommend selecting single auto so that your robotic total station, you'll rely on the actual automated ATR centering and recording the observations to the station points. So I will just return back to reflectless and we'll leave it on single manual. 
and I will record my first backside point. And we can see now it asks us to measure our new foresight point in phase one. So I can select over here. And what we can imagine now is out in the field, what I'll do is I'll manually turn my total station, I'll side up onto my point, and I will select measure. I could edit the point ID before I record it if I so wish. Okay, but I'll be happy with this as is. Now it asks us, do we want to add another new forward station or do we want to define the set as is? So if I select OK, I can add another point. And I can add another point again. And then we can say define set. What I will recommend is that if you are going through the process of extending your control, you're better off doing it in as minimal observations and as minimal setups as possible. So if on this one setup, I can I can put up 20 targets that will extend into different areas of my site. I'm better off doing it now as opposed to only doing one area, then coming back and doing it again. Okay, because you'll have a different setup error, and again, you just get in, you're mixing different errors in a different time. So the more we can do at once, the better it is all around. Once we've defined the set, our robotic total station will have automatically flipped into phase two and try re-aimed back at our last forward station, which in this point is point four. And I'll ask us, find aim at target four in phase two and press measure. We can see in the screen, it's kind of gone a, a good bit off. However, that's just because I'm using a simulator. Out in the field, you might find that it's more accurate itself. So if I just tell it to record onto point four and select measure, our robotic total station will then automatically try to turn on to point three and we record a measurement and so on. And it will go through the whole process. And we'll select measure before returning back to our original backside point. I'll record a measurement. Now that is considered one set of angles. So as I said, we'd recommend using three. So we can see there, and then what we will be presented is our plane and height residuals. If we weren't happy with the five mil, now generally out in the field, you won't get as high as five mil. That is just because I'm using it on the simulator. Okay, and actually centering onto the point isn't uh, as easy as it would be in the fields because the points, again, are going to be fixed. But if I wasn't happy, I can deselect it and the point actually won't be stored. However, if I am happy with all of the three, I can just leave them all selected, select green tick, and that is our sets now recorded. If we so wish, we can go home. We can see in the import and delete tab, it has created a new file called new control points where they are stored. But if we wanted to view the raw sets of angles and actually inspect them, what we could do is actually export out a report. So we could obviously define our company type, the format, but within data collection, if we hit the right hand arrow, you can see what types of information you can carry across. And we also have the function for sets of angles. So I could deselect all the information. So I'll leave point and we can leave sets of angles, but you can even see within there, what information do you want to actually carry across? And if we're happy, we can select green tick and it will actually produce a report for us. We'll just have a quick look at that. And we can see that here. So again, you can have your own customized logo and everything coming in. But again, you can go there and you look down through your results and you'll be able to see the residuals that were recorded through the sets of angles. Okay. That can also be exported out into CSV format. Again, so we want to actually manually look at the results out in Excel and actually manipulate them further. That would be so possible. So I'll just return back here. But within the two face and set function, that is all well and good. So that's doing rounds and sets of angles. We also have the function, if we configure our measure bar, we can actually come in and we'll see the two face option. So if we actually just want to record one single point just with two faces, we have got that function as well. Just by selecting it, it will run us through the process again of telling us, find name at your target one and face one, for a measure, it will flip around and you'll go through the process again. So guys, that's our two face and sets function within the Leica Icon field software. If you have any further questions regarding this, please feel free to get in touch.